All right, Zach, looks up, like Matt? we are recording, we are live, we are doing well here. Um, my name is Matt Inslee. I'm the publisher of The Rich Retirement Letter. First, we want to welcome you to joining our call. I'm joined by your editor, Zach Scheidt. Zach, it's great to have you here. It's good to be here, man. We've got a lot to talk about. It's, a, it's an important time to be having this call, and, and we've got a lot of good stuff to cover today. Yeah. One of the good parts, right? Like we're both working from home. We're here in our home offices or whatever. It's, it's been interesting, but also very good in some senses. And one of them is that we can come to, uh, come to you, the, the viewer, uh, right from our home and we can get you very urgent information. Um, we're talking about the markets here for the second half of 2020. So we're right on the cusp of, you know, a lot of question marks. What's going to happen? We know kind of what happened in the last hundred day or so with uh, <laughs> coronavirus and and Zach, you've been doing a great job. I will say kudos on keeping our readership up to speed on what's going on, how the market's evolving. Uh, it's been an interesting ride, right? It has. And we've got a great team. And I can't take all the credit for it. We've got a great team here at St. Paul Research that we've all been, you know, collaborating together, uh, even from different remote places, uh, each of us focusing on different areas of opportunity. And that's kind of the exciting thing about this time period is that you can have teams together uh, in separate parts of the country, all working together closely in, uh, in, in monitoring situations and working on projects and putting together great material for you guys. So yeah, there's, there's so much to, that, that we've been covering. My head still sort of spins if you think back in what, what was going on in February and March of this year. It's crazy. Uh, before everything broke, who could have seen you know, this whole round trip that we've had in the market? Um, but yeah, there's, there's been a lot, uh, a lot to be on top of and Matt, I got to tell you, the, the second half looks like we're going to have uh, just as much, if not more, opportunity than we've seen in the first half. Um, and today I wanted to, to talk really, if we could, about three uh, main issues that I see for the sec second half of the year. Uh, three predictions, if you will, of where uh, our best opportunities are. In yeah, why don't we outline those real quick and then we'll dive into them. Okay, yeah. So the first one is, is basically... Fed and government stimulus. We've got the Fed keeping interest rates at historically low uh, levels. We've got the, the government with Congress and Trump and everybody kind of plowing a, an incredible amount of stimulus into the market, helping businesses and individuals. That's a big trend that's, that's driving a lot of opportunity. The second is actually, I, I call it buyout capital being put to work. There is a ton of money sitting on corporate balance sheets right now. In companies, there, there's some haves, Companies that have a ton of money, there are have-nots, companies that are really struggling in this situation. And the haves have a, 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 a huge amount of money and access to even more money, and they're going to be using this cash uh, to create buyout opportunities, and those buyout opportunities can, can really trigger some huge overnight gains for investors. So that's another area that I wanted to focus on. And then the third was inflation. And when we talk about inflation, there are a lot of scary things about inflation. You know, if, you, if it costs more to buy the things that we need to, to buy. But inflation also has a good side where inflation drives the price of things up. And when I talk about things, drives the price of things like stocks higher, drives the, things, the price of things like investments in real estate higher, drives the price of things like gold and other precious metals higher. Yep. So those are some areas that we can... Uh, we can really look at some some big opportunities in. So those are the three areas that I wanted to talk about today. Awesome. So why don't we, um, again, anyone watching right now, this is a great part. Um, we've relaunched the Rich Retirement Letter. Zach's at the helm here. Um, I'm behind the scenes as the publisher. And we're really excited to bring not only great daily content to your inbox, but also great video content as well, where we can get some of these quick, hard-hitting um, ideas out there. Um, it's right here, midsummer. We're looking at the second half. So be excited about this call, but um, other calls and videos coming down the road where Zach will get you plugged into exactly what's happening as soon as we can. We'll post it on our Rich Retirement uh, website and we'll go from there. So yeah. Zach, let's, uh, let's take it from here. You were talking about the Fed and government stimulus. Let's hit number one. Right. So first off, we know in the past, in the first half of this year, we had a tremendous amount of stimulus. The Fed cut rate interest rates to zero and they bought bonds like crazy. Now, what that means when the Fed buys bonds is it's basically just shoveling money into the economy. It's buying bonds, which actually helps companies be able to raise more capital uh, and be able to get their hands on the money that they need to at a really cheap level. And then, of course, low interest rates. Uh, that applies to companies. It applies to individuals. It applies to all of us. Um, so that's the Fed side of things. The Fed is actually separate from the government. And when we talk about the government, I'm talking about 
the executive branch, President Trump and Congress uh, putting together plans uh, for the American people. Those plans have resulted in, we've seen a number of different programs. One was the PPP, so loans directly to uh, businesses. We also saw these $1,200 checks that were mailed out to individuals. You didn't have to apply for them, you didn't have to do anything, they just showed up either in your mailbox or in your bank account. And then we also saw some big uh, stimulus that helped unemployed. So if you were unemployed, you got the normal uh, unemployment checks that would come whenever you filed unemployment, but also uh, there was an additional $600 benefit that continues to be paid out over and over to people who are still on unemployment rolls. Now, yeah. Matt, I wanna go out on a limb here and I wanna tell you, this thing isn't over. It's not over by a long shot. We both, so, there's certain things we agree on, Zach, and that's one of them. This <laughs> like, government spending is not over anytime soon. No, no. And in fact, as we're talking right now, we're starting to see some of the rates for coronavirus creep back up. So economies have started to open back up. People are getting back together again. And it, it shouldn't be a huge surprise, but we're seeing coronavirus rates kick back up. So that means now governments are going to have to start adjusting to that. We may see some localized shutdowns. We may see uh, different stresses in the economy and even people not willing to go out, uh, whether it be go out to work or go out to shop or go out to be with, uh, with their friends. And all of that together is going to cause some more problems in the economy, but it's also going to cause uh, Congress to step in and say, yep, we're going to extend this. We're going to add new payments. I think we're going to see uh, those $600 payments that we talked about extend throughout the end of the year. I yeah. think that's going to happen. And throughout that's something you've, you've been ahead of this story on the news, and if you're following financial news or the nightly news or whatever, a lot of big hedge fund managers and different people are saying, man, the market has gotten disconnected from reality or yeah. we can't believe it's going up. Um, mm -hmm. Part of the reality is what the Fed and the US government are doing here, and they are just funneling money in. And when it comes down to it, that's a basic fundamental that if you don't understand it as, a, as an investor or an American, you could be on the wrong side of that trade. So you've been ahead of it, right. Zach. The Fed and the US government through different forms and like, like magic money, money's going into the economy. And then that money is finding its way back to the stock market. That's a simple. It really thing. is. It really is. And you see that in lots of different uh, just ways of looking at it. the Robin Hood and some of those other apps that people use to just get started investing have been wildly profit or wildly. Um, they've been followed. They've been, they've been picked up on many, many people are adding to these, uh, to these mm -hmm. smaller accounts and these, these different apps. And all of that money is then helping to drive uh, stock prices higher. Not to mention the traditional brokerages that, that people are putting this, you know, a few hundred dollars here, a few thousand dollars there into the market. It's coming from the government, through the people, into the market and driving stocks higher. Uh, yeah. And that's something that, that we should continue to see. Now, one of the things that I wanted to point out as this money comes into individual bank, bank accounts, and we're seeing that right now, uh, we're going to see some specific areas of retail continue to do well. So Matt, uh, you and I have talked about outdoor uh, gear, like Yeti and uh, Dick's Sporting Goods and some of those places. They're selling out of stuff because people are so sick and tired of being at home. They want to buy a kayak. They want to buy you know, a cooler to go just head out to the trails. Um, yeah. and, and so these outdoor retail areas are doing really well. They're selling a lot of stuff. So that's one area that I would focus on for your retirement. Uh, and again, this is all about building a rich retirement and taking advantage of the opportunities that the market gives you right now. That's one way that this, this money that's flowing into individuals' bank accounts, that's one of the main places that I see. Yeah, it. it's got to go somewhere. And we even saw it. I think there's been some charts that I've seen that's like U.S., like the, the saving rate has gone up. Which again, for America, that's a little crazy because we're not a we're not a country of savers for the most part of late. So that has to be a short term phenomenon. What you're saying, and it's true, it's just happening. When that money goes into someone's bank account in America, as history, short term history has showed us, they're looking at buying a kayak or they're looking at buying an expensive cooler or looking to do something with it. And there's yeah. only certain avenues where that money can go right now because retail shops, for the most part, by and large, aren't open. And right. restaurants aren't open. So that, that money is piling up and it's going places. And, and you know what it's like to be, a, in some ways, I, I look at the, uh, the, the U.S. economy as a bunch of teenagers with, with new bank accounts, maybe because I have a bunch of teenagers at my house. But when you put <laughs> money in a teenager's bank account, it gets spent. It's just human nature. And yeah. that's, uh, that's exactly what you're saying. We're, we have places, uh, the, the few places that are available for consumers to spend, that money is being spent. Yeah. Um, so 
expect that, make sure that you're invested in a way that you can profit from that. And that kind of brings us around to uh, point number two, the capital that's being put to work uh, by corporations. So Matt, um, just in the past few weeks, we've seen a couple big companies with a lot of cash actually go to the bond markets and borrow more money. I, I was really, I don't know if I want to say surprised, but it, it, it was an eye opener to see Apple uh, borrowing $8.5 billion um, when Apple is sitting on almost $200 billion worth of cash already. But why not? Because interest rates are so low, they can borrow money at almost nothing. And the same thing happened with Amazon. Amazon borrowed, I think it was $5 billion worth of extra money on top of the cash that they already have. And yeah. they borrowed it at, I believe it was 0.4 or 0.5% for several years. Uh, so money is cheap. There are some companies that are doing just fine and they're able to basically get their hands on billions and billions of dollars uh, of this cheap money. And what are they gonna do with it? Well, we talked earlier about there's haves and have nots. There are companies that are doing great, that have plenty of money, that are able to generate good business, and there are have nots. There are companies that are struggling, and in some ways they're struggling on a temporary basis because mm -hmm. we know that this economy is gonna be okay. We know that eventually we're gonna find a cure to coronavirus. We know that people are gonna go back out again. That's a given, but some of these have not companies may not make it or may just really struggle because they don't have enough cash to actually get through this challenging period. So what we're going to see, and we're already starting to see it, uh, is that the companies that have money are going to use that money to buy out entire competing, com uh, competing companies. So when this happens, let's say that, the, that one of the have-nots is trading at $12.50 per share. Uh, the stock has gone down because investors are worried about the, the potential and the, the, the future for this company. Well, one of the haves company, like an Apple or a, an Amazon, will say, hey, I'd like to buy out this little software company. We, we'd love to have this as part of our company because we can use it to, to generate new apps that we can sell to our, product, uh, to our customers and so forth. We'll pay $20 per share for this company, even though it's only trading at $12.50 because we're going to buy all of the shares at $20. And so what happens is there's an agreement that's made typically over a weekend or overnight between Apple, the company that has, and XYZ software company, mm -hmm. one of these struggling companies, where they agree to buy out all the shares for 50% more than the original price, 80% more than the original price, sometimes 100, 120% more than the original price. And so the next morning when that buyout is announced, the smaller company, the, that stock jumps in price uh, because all of a sudden, we all know that Microsoft is buying out this, this company at a, at a much higher price. Yeah, so not only from your standpoint in the first thing that we talked about, where it's like the Fed and government stimulus is just going to kind of rise all the boats, there are going to be some boats that just kind of shoot up overnight because of this. And we're starting to see it like that, the M&A activity, people, uh, some buyouts, some takeovers, companies yep. trying to merge together. Um, there's a lot of opportunity there, too, because I don't think we're at the, the end of this have and have not argument. And uh, there's even some conspiracy theories. I don't think we've talked about this personally, Zach, but like a company like Amazon and a company like say Walmart or whoever it may be, they've got a lot of incentive for the, the market staying the way it is. Like people staying home yeah. and them having their own, they're the one safe store that's able to open. All of a sudden, I mean, it's just reality. Some companies cannot stay solvent. They go out of business. It's better for Amazon. It's better for Walmart. So that's like a conspiracy theory side of it. But the other part is just like, those big companies have money and the little companies are getting cheaper or going towards yeah. either bankruptcy or just tough times. The big companies can swoop in and for investors looking at those companies and finding the ones that might be buyout targets, it's a huge opportunity. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and that's one of the things that we focus on with our team and, and as part of our Buyout Millionaires Club um, newsletter that I write, but we, we actually have an indicator that's able to look for the companies uh, yeah. that are going to be those targets. And that's something cool about uh, Rich Retirement Letter as well. I mean, again, we know that the Bio Millionaires Club, that's a paid service, uh, yeah, yeah. the premium research service on the backside. But we're going to be able to talk about a lot of the things that you're learning and maybe not the exact stuff that we're, we're giving to those premium readers, but a lot of it can come out here in the daily editorial and through sure. these videos. So, you and know, it's absolutely. a trend that can make a lot of money for a lot of different investors uh, in many different industries. So, yep. totally agree with you there. It's a, it's, a, it's a huge area of opportunity. All right. What about, what about the third point? You want to hit it? Yep. Uh, inflation. 
and inflation and how it can affect many different areas of your life. We know the fearful side of inflation. If inflation moves higher and it costs $7 to buy a loaf of bread or $10 to buy a gallon of gas, that's tough, especially when it comes to your savings and how much you put aside for retirement. Um, you start having questions about whether that retirement capital is going to last. Here's how to make it last. If you're able to invest that capital in things that benefit from inflation, then your, your nest egg, that retirement plan that you work so hard to put together will actually balloon and expand as inflation drives those investment opportunities higher. Yep. So I think that inflation right now, because of all this money we talked about earlier, it's all this money is coming into consumer and business bank accounts and is being invested into the stock market and, and into the economy in different ways and into, into buyout opportunities. All of that has a potential to drive the stock market higher. We've seen it since March. It's already happening. Uh, the S&P 500 is up something like 35%, maybe 40% from the March lows. And it's the same thing, right? Like we'll, we'll take an important time in history, the 1971 when we went off the gold standard from then yep. until now. And then more recently from about beginning at end of 2008, 2009 beginning, then until now, I mean, the markets have just gone not straight up, but very close to straight up. And it's because of that, um, you know, whether it's, stimulus, whether it's government spending, whether it's whatever, the stock is stock market is getting inflated. Inflation yeah. is happening. So I know that there's people way smarter than I am that are back and forth like deflation, inflation. Let's be honest. You've told it to me before. You've got some lofty price targets for the S&P and the Dow, but the mm -hmm. Dow sitting at, you know, it's still close to all time highs. We can see Dow 50,000 soon. It's not yeah. like, that's not crazy when money just flows into the system. That's right. And that's and basic you inflation. The more you have of something, the, the less value it has. So if you think about that in terms of money, the more you print money, the less value each dollar has. So it takes more of those dollars to buy yep. anything, to buy shares of IBM and Home Depot and Walmart, or to buy gold or to buy other uh, in, um, inflation type of protections. Yeah. And so that, that is one of the things. I think that big blue chip companies that have stable businesses, these are great investments to help protect you against inflation. They absolutely will, will rise, you know, at the same rate, you know, sometimes a bit more, sometimes less uh, than inflation, but they'll help protect the capital that you've set aside uh, for investing. Another area is real estate. I do think that um, whether you invest in stocks that own real estate so that you're in the market, but uh, you're, you're getting the same benefits as real estate or your home that you own, if, you, if you're able to invest in other homes, uh, to actually be able to profit from that, uh, that rise in real estate. Inflation will help you there. And then finally, I think owning gold is a huge win in this environment. Uh, whether you own physical gold, which is a great thing. I think everybody should own some physical gold and keep it in a safety deposit box or a safe in your home. Or whether you trade gold opportunities in the market, both of those will do very well in this type of environment. Um, I think, Matt, I think we're going to see $3,000 uh, on gold by the end of the year. We've talked about that right now. Gold is already creeping up very close to the high that we saw um, in the 2000, in the, in the way yeah, right around the 2011. Right? Yeah. Yeah. We're getting very close to that. And I said, I said we would get there. We've, we've been, we've been marching right in that direction. Yeah. And gold at 2000 bucks is almost a no brainer. And then once you start getting, I mean, we saw it with, I don't even like to say the word Bitcoin because you know, I'm not a Bitcoin guy. Yeah. But we saw it in Bitcoin in the uh, late, late 2017, early 2018, where people just went nuts. Oh, they're buying this made up currency, like la la land, you know, whereas Gold could possibly get a, a similar momentum run. Yeah. Got a lot. Once you break that high, then people are like, oh, it, it starts hitting the news wires. Yep. Traditional investors who haven't been on the gold bandwagon for a long time start to pay attention. And you have a whole new wave of people who are not at all invested in gold all of a sudden say, hmm, this is an area I should be involved in. And that's what drives you from that 2000, you know, what yep. used to be the high up to another 50% or, or more from there. Yeah, because once it starts seeming seeming to be scarce, more and more money comes in, more and more momentum comes in. Then yep. you get the retail investor, the big big money moving in, and then the whole thing just happens. I don't think that I don't think any of that money's in the market right now, and where the price of gold per ounce is already pretty high. So yep. a great place to be looking too. Um, Zach, anything? I mean, that's three amazing and you know 
basically forward-looking points that you've made. One, we got to keep an eye on that government spending because it's going to happen. It's going to keep getting bigger and more. And you got to understand as an investor what that means. Um, the, the point that buyouts could be a major theme in the second half of 2020. And then the fact that inflation is coming, whether you want to argue deflation, inflation, we think inflation for stock prices and inflation for things like gold, um, that will kick in here in the second half. So Zach, any, uh, any last words? I say we round it out here, but the, the one thing I can say to everybody watching is we're going to be, we're going to be doing calls like this daily content that will be following up on all of these topics. Um, and that way you can hear directly from Zach, former hedge fund manager, who's got his eyes and, and ears to the ground here, sees what's happening. Um, Zach, any last words here? No, I just say this is a big picture call for us. So we're looking at a lot of, a lot of big picture things here. And I understand that, you know, some of you guys may want to know a little bit more details about each one of these and just echoing Matt, what Matt was saying, we're going to be talking about all those details. We'll be talking about how to put those into your retirement account. We'll be talking about how to generate income so that you have that income to pay for your expenses. All of this is part of living a rich retirement. And I can't wait to unpack more of this as we, uh, we continue this discussion through alerts, through social media, through our videos. And um, we just got a lot in store uh, for the second half of the year. Can't wait to, to keep this conversation going with you guys. Awesome. Well, I'm Matt Inslee, publisher here at Rich Retirement Letter, and I will say thank you for tuning in. Zach, again, thank you for your time. I appreciate it. It's been great. Any last words? Nope. Thanks for being on the call, guys. All right. Thank you all. We'll see you next time. All right.